Hey everyone, today we're going to do a little something different and see, I just decided to do a drawing while I was waiting for a doctor's appointment. So uh, this is of course sped up as you can tell, but this isn't, this was done without any rehearsal and or any planning. I just felt like showing, you know, a working process video of like, hey, here's what I do, etc. So uh, I once I decided the character I was going to draw, which is the White Power Ranger from uh, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, my personal favorite design of the original series, started roughing out a pose. Now he is well known for his his dagger, uh, Saba, I believe the name is. So I decided I wanted to have that at the forefront, like he was ready to fight and kind of a cool, intimidating pose. And I really like to draw figures uh, not standing straight up, but he's in like more of a crouched uh, fighting stance. And I turned the knee outward just a little bit to give it kind of a little bit more of that Jack Kirby flair. And yeah, in retrospect, I drew the knee um, or drew that like way too big. But, you know, if you've only got a couple hours of sleep and you feel like creating, you're going to make mistakes. And that is totally OK. Art is all about mistakes and it's about learning and growing from those mistakes. Like you can see here, I'm trying to get a feeling for the leg, uh, the uh, his left leg. And when placing it. I try to give all of my characters a position of strength and power, and I don't want any lines that uh, contradict that. Now looking at developing the musculature of the arm, I'm well aware he has that those big shoulder pads slash uh, chest armor. So while I don't spend a lot of time on the shoulder, I still do want to make sure that it makes some kind of sense. and. I adjust the arm quite a bit because uh, the uh, his non-dagger holding arm <laughs> because I didn't really like the way it looked as I'm penciling it and you know as an artist you just get to feel that way that oh this isn't working and don't try to force it if it isn't working you know that I could say that with almost anything in life if your instinct is telling you you know, this isn't feeling quite right. Like the first thing you saw me rough out was his head position. And already I knew it was too big and in the wrong place with the rest of his body. So then I adjusted it. And where I put my guiding lines initially was to have him look in another direction. But the more I drew it, I realized that the drawing would have a lot more impact if he was looking at you, uh, the viewer. And again, yeah, that knee is... And that leg is just way too big. I think because I was working on a really low angle shot for a uh, Winter Soldier, uh, upcoming Winter Soldier illustration, that that lower angle perspective is locked in my head. And I just kind of stuck with that. So here, roughing out the leg and also trying to film without a tripod his or a camera mount just waiting in in my car was pretty tough. So I'm uh, not saying that excuses any mistakes that you're seeing, but it was a little challenging on my mind. So as you can see, I just decided to erase a lot of that leg because it wasn't working. The bent down pose, the, the leg bend, just, I wasn't feeling it. So I put him in a lot more of, uh, in Taekwondo we call it horseback riding stance, but uh, okay, that isn't even an accurate representation, but just into a, a lower martial arty crouch, like he's ready to spring into action. And I like to draw really messy, as you can tell. Um, there is so much value placed on clean lines and clean line work, and I'm not, uh, I'm not dismissing that. I think that it is a very great skill. It's just for me, it, it's almost like. I have to start with an overabundance of material and then choose my lines carefully to work. Uh, it's not the way that everyone works, especially, you know, I see a lot of artists who will just do the messy work that I do and then put a clean sheet of paper or if you're drawing digitally a new layer and uh, trace over that. 
uh, to get the more refined lines. And, you know, I'm not here to judge anyone's artistic process. If you get a result that you like, then by all means, keep doing it. Now, you're going to notice some jumps in the video, and unfortunately, I only had my cell phone with me, so with those jumps, it's pretty much just me looking at the reference for uh, the costume and saying, oh, okay, this should look like this, and this is positioned like that. So there I am just redoing the head guidelines like I was talking about earlier, and as I started to uh, pencil in his armor, uh, I noticed that... You know, the arm isn't working for me, the uh, the raised arm, like, at all. And uh, so in my head, I'm starting to think, okay, time to go back and change this up. But still adding in enough of the uh, uniform guidelines and details. And then I start to put a new arm in there, saying, okay, I don't like this pose. And... I put him in with more of the uh, Tiger Claw stance uh, because I remember that from the show quite fondly. And as I'm working on it, I realize, okay, it's also creating more depth in the drawing because if he's leading with his dagger, then that arm behind him indicates another image plane. So for me, overall, it worked a lot better. And just going in and adding more details, being mindful of the different textures you're going to get, and using those as layers as well. Like, I'm not sure what it was made of on the actual show, probably some spandex-like material, but the more gauntlets... the more gauntlets? The gauntlets and uh, leg armor was definitely implied to be metallic. And I'm not a big fan of characters just floating out there in space and accidentally created a tangent and took care of it, so I created just this little desert scape uh, for him to be standing on. And you didn't see it because I was looking a lot at reference for his uh, dagger, but drawing that sword is a real pain, let me tell you. Uh, if you ever want a character with a highly detailed, elaborate fantasy sword or whatever, I would suggest commissioning someone else, literally anyone else, because it turns out that's not something I enjoy drawing. But I did like drawing his helmet and the other uh, cool technical details, and I decided I wanted to have the sun coming in from the upper left, and so I started to pencil accordingly, and overall I use the shading in areas if just to uh, give a little uh, secret away. Areas I'm not feeling super confident in, I just black it out and to quote, I believe it was the great Wally Wood, I could be mistaken, but when in doubt, black it out. And with the shadows too, it isn't just about covering stakes, but it adds a lot more dimension and depth to the figure, but also texturing. Like with the metal texture here, when I go into ink it, it's going to look different than the uh, spandex parts of his armor, and the sword is going to look, di or the dagger is going to look different than the helmet, etc., etc. But now I'm just going in, putting details together that I know are going to help pop the drawing and differentiate things. Like, the bit of shadow I have on his back arm is, of course, going to contrast nicely with the foreground element. At this point in my inking and penciling detailing stage, I know where I'm going to want the shadows to fall and what I want to create with that work, but uh, I still pencil though to give myself like a preview of, hey, this is what this is going to look like, and am I really feeling it? Because if I'm not, then obviously, you know, I'm doing something wrong, but uh, I know artists that sometimes just draw in ink. Oh, and here's, uh, it's a little bit darker, but here's the uh, pencil stage up to that point. And now I'm going in with uh, microns is all I had on me and just starting to fill in the armor and 
yes, waiting for my appointment. I didn't uh, have any of my materials with me, like uh, like French curbs or anything like that. So it was just going to be relying on technique, and I'm going really slow here. And to give you an idea, this is still even sped up video, and I'm still taking it at a glacial pace. Because unlike pencils, you know, ink is permanent, and yeah, even though I do make some mistakes, and yes, there is white out, uh, there's no reason to be extra sloppy or to say, oh, well, with my brilliance, I'll just uh, cover it with, uh, with a shadow that doesn't make sense or anything like that. But yeah, when you're working with a micron, I try to avoid what's called a deadline. Uh, no, I don't mean art deadlines, even though those do creep up on me, but deadline as in the line has no life to it. It's just one solid line. So what I like to do is sometimes go back and trace over, again, the same line work uh, at a little bit of a different angle. And what that will do is create uh, more, it'll create more depth and more interest in the line if it starts thick and ends thin or starts thin is thick in the middle ends thin uh varying line work up is very paramount if you're trying to create a really dynamic i would say traditional uh superhero drawing i mean you can ink in nothing but uh dead weights or deadlines excuse me and still have it be an interesting piece but uh that's not something i tend to gravitate towards but you know if you're making it work for your narrative then absolutely keep doing it i am by no means the world's greatest artist so you know what i could just be talking about uh may mean nothing to you and that is great you know, I hope I get to see your style and get to see you rock it one day. And, you know, we can have debates over line weights all day. One thing I do love to do, though, is feathering. Uh, that just provides a lot of substance to the piece. Uh, helps delineate shape and things like that. And I was running out of recorded video, so I'm going to just show you a screenshot of the completed White Ranger piece. And overall, I am really happy with it. I uh, did have to use more whiteout than I normally would, but I, re I would recommend that before you draw, get a really good night's sleep if possible, and you can avoid making all kinds of mistakes and having to cover up your work, but not bad for waiting in a doctor's office. So thank you, and I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope that you keep telling your stories.